Hello, everyone. We are happy that you can join us today. It is a beautiful autumn day in Manitoba. My name is Lucy Vetterhender, and I am the curator here at the Art Gallery of Southwestern Manitoba, where our main gallery is proudly home to the exhibition Cryptic until November 13th. This exhibition was conceived of, created, and built on land designated by Treaties 1 and 2, which drew boundaries on the homeland of the Métis Nation, shared also by the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples. So let's work together to make sure that we never forget that everything we do on Native land is about Native land. Today, as we listen to Yvette speak, let's make those connections. Let's think about boundaries, who gets to define them, and how they can seem inert until they become barriers. Now, please allow me to introduce to you Yvette Senorini, née La Gimaudière. Yvette is a franco metis artist from Peg. Behavior and relationships are recurring themes throughout her work in media arts and printmaking. Having obtained both a B.Ed. in 2001 and a B.F.A. in 2010, knowledge sharing in the forms of teaching, mentoring, cultural mediation, and community engagement is an important facet of her practice. She is often used with the animal as a sentient subject with an approach that drips with sarcasm and humor. The work that we have on exhibit now, titled Technical Support, Soutien Technique, differs from this work in its central subject, but not in its two-sided sarcasm, and that is the work that we'll be hearing about today. A reminder that you are invited and encouraged to engage with this talk with both of us. Anything that you write in the comments section on whichever platform you're using today, we will see in real time and we'll be able to respond to that. So welcome, Yvette. Please take it over. Hi, thank you, Lucy. <laughs> Um, thank you everyone for going up to hear my story. Um, I just wanted to really share uh, what, what, um, how the whole project came to be because sometimes I forget all of the steps and um, I look at a piece maybe three years later, 10 years later and like, how did I even do that? I don't even know. And so this will be good documentation for me to look back on too. So thank you for being here. Um, so when I um, titled this piece, um, Technical Support, it, it's just uh, you know a little play on words um, of how when your iPad's not working or your printer is broken, you, you Google tech support for for something. And so I feel like um, I like have technical support on speed dial for everything I do in life. So I, um, it just was really fitting to, to have that name as te te as technology based. And when I say who the artist is, I, I write my name, but I also put um, with assistance of Ken Gregory, Erica Lincoln, Ray Peterson, and Diana Thornycroft, because those four individuals uh, are all um, artists who worked with me. Um, and it's not even really, um, it's sort of a collaboration, but it was always understood that this was my piece. And so um, it, it seems like it's, it's an even deeper collaboration because these artists are helping um, me produce a work um, that I want to do and that I envision. Um, so it's a, um, you know, tricky, tricky ground. Um, so I'll just go through this slide and please just interrupt me or ask me questions or whatever as we go. I, I don't mind at all. <laughs> um, just for a little context, this is me. Uh, 15 years old, the tall one by the tree. Um, this was taken in Banff just before my diving accident, which happened in, uh, in uh, oh my God, 1991. So um, um, I have quadriplegia. I broke my neck in a diving accident. And so I went from complete um, independence. Well, you know, not complete, nobody is completely uh, independent from others, but um, I was independent to, you know, completely un, un uh, totally, totally independent uh, in a matter of seconds. 
And this was an apparatus that they used um, to keep my neck straight while it healed. It's called a halo. Um, and so, you know, I pretended to be an angel for, for a couple of months as uh, my neck healed. They screw um, bolts into the, just the first sort of like layer of the skull uh, just to hold it straight. Um, super uncomfortable, kind of scary um, and surreal. But these are the kinds of machines and and things that, that uh, kept me going uh, at first. Um, so um, I did, I wasn't an artist before I um, injured myself. I was only 15, granted, but I became an artist later on in life. And this is the first piece that I made after graduating uh, during a mentorship with Diana Thornycroft. And I just looking, I was like, wow, look at that. I used technology in my very first piece. I didn't even think of that. I thought that, you know, the piece that I just did for Cryptic was my first one, but this one was actually my first one. And funny enough, um, Ken Gregory, um, who helped me with Cryptic, with the cryptic piece is the one who did this um for me so it's just about a study of a of a mother rat who who protects not only her own species but baby baby bunnies and chicks as well and so the little wire um was like reference to a, a study where the the rat the mother rat would run across um an electrical field um to retrieve babies of other species and bring them back to care for them even though it was causing harm to herself. And so it's, um, that was my, my first um, piece. So it's, it's, it is about dependence and, and um, people helping others and uh, compassion and empathy. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. And then I, I moved on and in the same series, I do talk about disability a little bit and I found a bunch of, um, some uh, of my little wheelchair friends here. Um, and I just found it really, um, really inspiring how people out there uh, worked hard to invent these mechanisms to allow this goat to, to survive and to keep on, to keep on living. Um, you know, like someone has to build that contraption. Someone has to put, put the bunny tie the bunny up uh, in the morning and undo the bunny in the, at night. And so that's sort of um, what I go through. And um, I just uh, felt a real connection with these little animals. And then I also did work on um, pain and uh, whether or not fish feel pain. And so I use these lures, which are also, you know, metal and cold but still feeling um and these were all on um on different layers of mylar um so this fish this one actually has like five layers of mylar that's why it looks like deep um because you can see through and then the, the individual fish have shadows so i was trying to work with collage in a way that would be um a little more uh, interactive or give it a little bit more depth. And this is this is a piece here. So the shadow you're seeing is actually the shadow of the of the print um, on Mylar, which is screen printed in the back uh, white to make it opaque. Um, and so that was my my attempt at, at making collage more vibrant. Uh, here's another piece I did a long time ago about um, just sort of feeling trapped and being watched, um, you know, as spectacle. Um, it sort of is a recurring theme <laughs> in my work. It's kind of surprising. Here's a mother, um, a mother uh, primate uh, caring for her child, um, kind of stuck in her cell. And I, this was this I made while I while I was mothering um, babies. And I felt really, it was just really difficult for me to have to delegate other people to take care of my own babies. And so it was, it was hard. I connected with this monkey. 
Um, and here's another sort of um, way that I tried to make collage a little more interactive. I uh, This piece is actually kind of a book. It's print, there's like five different layers um, and you can interchange them to make the piece look what, um, what you like. And so if you want the chimpanzee to be um, force fed some milk, uh, you can pour that down his mouth. You can have a photographer, you can not have a photographer, you can have a background, not a background. Um, this is the London Zoo chimpanzee tea parties. Um, they used to, they used to throw for entertainment and um, that's just another way that I try to make collage more interactive. And um, this is a video about <laughs> This is my video of empathy, and you'll see that this video is very much connected to what's playing, what's on exhibition right now. Um, it's just about um, helping others, and it's um, an anecdotal study um, that I read in a book about uh, two turtles. Watch he winks at the end. <laughs> so it's just, um, it's just a, you know, it was just a, it's just, it's all connected, right? Like this little turtle is helping the bigger turtle who is, is stuck on his back. And, and then we all, um, we all need a friend like that sometimes. So um, I'm not sure why this slide's not changing. There we go. Now, when um, this um, mentorship at Video Pool and Arts Accessibility Network Manitoba came up, you know, I wasn't sure that I wanted to apply, but then um, I was encouraged by someone who said, you know, like, wouldn't you want to make your, have your collages move somehow? Like, what would you want, what would you want moved? And so right away, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, that's good. And what would I, like, what would I move? Like birds flying through the sky or, or whatever. And then I, I was like, well, duh. Um, if I want to have anything move, it would be my own body. Um, so I thought of this little, I had this exact same little, little music box when I was younger and you would crank it and, and they would dance together. And then because they were like bouncing up and down the feet, the little feet would sort of fly around and and they're just like on little hinges and i thought oh, maybe i could just make make myself um as a really big doll <laughs> so i called um diana who was my mentor before and feel very safe and comfortable with her and this is her trying to figure out lighting because she says she's not a photographer um <laughs> but she is and uh she helped me um i had her come to my house with a healthcare aide to to do a full um body photography session um so that i could build this uh, this doll of myself um and this is the headshot that we took i was going for very serious like what else are you going to throw at me kind of look um, and it was really kind of fun to work on, um, images of myself really close up for like, cause I, I don't know, I guess I don't really spend a lot of time looking at all the, all of my parts, but this is how we had to, um, photograph things is it just in little chunks, because if you want the good quality so that I could have it, um, be wide enough, um, or large enough, I, um, I had to take the pictures close, close. And so it was just, it was just neat to work with these photos because like, I don't, I can't reach my toes. I don't ever see them really. And so when I was like cutting out my, cutting out my, um, my feet and my toes, it was like, oh, wow, I should really have that looked at or, you know, it was kind of an, it was kind of a neat experience. And, um, being able to uh, 
see, you know, all the little, and I think it was like minus 50. So I had a little bit of, uh, a little bit of frostbite. <laughs> and so this was my first uh, try at a limb. Uh, so I did the arm, uh, cut up pieces, um, has to, had to like paste things together to, to make it, make it fit. And, and then I had to cut things into circles at the end so that when the limb moves, um, you're not seeing like a, an awkward corner. And so everything sort of had to match. And I still don't know how I had the patience to do all that. I'm not sure I'd be able to anymore. Um, and so this was my very first try. I printed it out on Masonite and I cut it out just to see what it would, what it would look like. And here, uh, they look big, but they're really, really, really tiny. Um, this is, uh, Erica Lincoln, another one of the my assistants who helped me, she took the image that I just sh showed you and she made it smaller and she tried cutting it out with a laser. Because um, my initial idea was just that I would laser cut everything and it would be super, super simple. But the laser burns the side of the wood a lot and it requires like a lot of sanding to get that off. And if the print that I'd be gluing onto the wood was there, it would rip and it just, that's sort of like where we, we had to like, I had to reimagine how I was gonna, how I was gonna do it. But this was like a prototype, right? So this is like the painful process of, of practicing things and trying to figure stuff out before you, um, you know, go right ahead and, and build the real deal. Um, so again, this is another shot of it, just super tiny. And then Ken um, and Erica helped me, and th this was like our very first prototype, uh, just to see how it would work. And so we've, um, like, Ken is holding it um, with a with a um, screwdriver onto the desk so that uh, the arm stays um, free and then that other it looks like another piece of arm but we just used it as a lever um, there's a little uh, motor sitting on the table computer thingy and then that's connected to the computer which Erica uh, Lincoln was telling the computer what to do with the I don't I was so happy to have help on this but um I'll just play it a little bit. This was our first like, wow, it's working. Oh my gosh. How come it disappeared? Yeah, no. <laughs> hmm. It's weird. Hmm. I think I deleted it. <laughs> Undo, undo. <laughs> Technical support. Okay. There you go. I'll try playing it again. Oh, he's doing a drum roll. <laughs> oh, you got the wrong end. Yeah. <laughs> So it was just like, it was just trial and error. And that was kind of a fun moment that like all these little, little successes kind of keep you going. So here's a little bit of, pro I'll, I'll go through it. Like this is like my Photoshop work. Okay, so this is all the pictures sort of stuck together. And then I had to work and massage it and measure things to have it um, and fill in some blanks to have it um, complete. And so after I had the full body, I had to chop it all, I had to chop it all up again. And so that was also fun. And this is no word of a lie. This is what I. This is the best example I could find online that that really helped me design my own doll. Um, awful, um, but uh, this is th this 
same idea. And so that's how I, uh, how I made mine. And it just so happened that um, there was a show at the University of Winnipeg meeting about disability and care and comfort. And so this piece went, I, I made it as a purposeful, like, I positioned everything in a way that it would look like this is a paper doll you're supposed to cut out. And um, that was kind of fun. It just turned into this whole other, this whole other thing. And I had small um, dolls printed or people could just come to the gallery, cut them out and put these tiny little grommets in the limbs and position the dolls, you know, however they wanted. And um, it was really neat. I was there for like this little doll making session people cutting up my legs and reassembling me. Um, it was, it was a, a lot like how I, how healthcare, um, how I depend on healthcare to, to put me together and to keep me, to keep me in one piece. Here's Janelle Shaw, the director of AANM with her little doll um, that she made. And this is what she did with it. <laughs> so um, it was sort of this idea of letting people take me home and, and just to see, you know, how long they could handle taking care of it of me, and what what kind of things they would they would do to me if they had the chance to do whatever they wanted. Like, would they would they take care of me? Would they neglect me? Um, so that's sort of interesting. This is just shots of like the printing before I had it printed. Um, um, so so that's at the printers. Now we're now I'm focusing on what I'm going to use to. Um, to hold everything up. And so this is uh, a patient lift. Um, and this is what I use every day to get in and out of bed. And so this is what I wanted. I uh, wanted this sort of feeling of this like mechanical patient lift. And um, I'm just showing you this. This is from a pool. This is the only shot I have of me in this, in this Hoyer thing sling. I think my kid took it. Um, cause they were so excited that I was going into the pool. Um, they have never, you know, I had never been into a pool with them and we went on vacation. This is um, something we, we tried. So the pool had this mechanical, uh, pool lift chair thing that we decided to try. And so, um, machines like this, you know, allow me to, to not only live, but function. And, uh, it also helped the people uh, who take care of me, take care of me. It would be pretty hard to lift me in and out of bed without these kinds of things. And they allow for, you know, special moments. Um, and they allow me to just, to just do life. There's our, my kids super happy that I don't know that I'm in the water. I don't know. It just made them, they were just so happy. And it was like a five minute thing. I didn't last very long in there. I'll tell you that much. Uh, it was cold. <laughs> um, so so then this is sort of the lift that I have at home. It's actually connected to the ceiling. That other lift that I showed you was a lift from like that, that I use to travel. Um, but at home, my lift is connected to the ceiling. And so my initial image was to have the lift connected to the ceiling, but just for like being able to put it up in different galleries. And it was just kind of a, a headache. So anyways, this is the initial, um, this was when I wrote the grant, this was my, how I would show the idea. I hadn't even finished, um, putting the building my body yet. Um, and so this was all the sort of the material. And so instead of getting the sitting sling, like you saw in the other image, uh, I decided to go for a standing sling, like the picture, um, with the man in his jammies. Um, so that I could stand. Otherwise I would just always be sitting. And so that's, um, that was great. So I learned all about these Arduino boards and server motors. The Arduino board, Arduino is like the little brain of the whole thing. And the server motors um, are the, th where it was the thing that was gonna turn and pull up the, the straps. Um, and so what I did instead of uh, getting a Hoyer, I looked on Kijiji and found someone selling a standing, um, a standing uh, thing like trapeze, they call it. 
So it's just something that people use, you know, on the side of their bed to grab onto and, and lift themselves up. So it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but here you see Ken and Erica, um, you know, planning out how they were going to help me make this work. Um, so we actually, Ken made some extra pieces uh, that were specially made to have more of that um, arch, the sling thing on top so that I could um, use it to, so I can try to make it look more like a Hoyer. And uh, I had to go to a car paint shop to buy this paint so it would match the rest of the machine. Um, so I learned a lot about, you know, how to match paint color to my car. So this is also, I bought this sling on Kijiji as well. Um, so it's a standing sling. And I I had the, the prints arrived and we were just so excited to see what it would look like. We strung it up. We strung it up like this in um, my friend's studio. Um, and um, it was just, that was another sort of exciting moment, right? And here's Ken, uh, Erica. Erica Lincoln cut everything out with a jigsaw. So I printed it on masonite. So it would be like hard enough. And um, she cut everything out, you know, um, every little detail one by one. And then we sprayed it with uh, some coating so that the paint wouldn't, or the pigment of the print wouldn't, you know, fade or come off so easily from being moved. Um, so when she sent me this picture, it was just so weird. It was like, wow, you're <laughs> my old body's all chopped up in your in your basement. Um, so yeah, that was fun. And then here's Ken uh, assembling it like Frankenstein, putting everything together. We went shopping. We went to Home Depot, bought a bunch of bolts, and and uh, it's amazing how much thought um, every little detail. Uh, takes uh, and so he's he's just putting things together here and then then this was all done and I was like there and then I put I put myself to rest on um, the studio that it was that I lived in for for a few months while it was built was uh, my friend Susan Abbott's and so and so I stayed at I stayed at her house for uh, at her at her studio for a while and uh this was my resting position so i just really like this shot with all these curves and lines thought that was interesting so then it was time to figure out how we can get this uh this doll to stand up on the sling and here's ken you know holding it up and um i told him to hold it higher so that i could see how tall i was and i am taller than ken gregory <laughs> maybe <laughs> and so he's playing around with it and we're just trying to see you know how things would move and um and it was just it was just really that moment was just really surreal like oh my god it's like he's you know he he's got all the i'll show you the a little bit of a video of of him trying to like just see how the um how the bolts are hitting other things and how how it's moving i actually like this a lot <laughs> a lot uh, um you know do anything more than to school out which um maybe if i'm oh i just schooled out while someone's doing it then it'll get all tangled up because this is a little more organic than the, the than what i have it as right now right but um then you just have to trust the viewer even more to <laughs> manipulate the piece right <laughs> and then we discovered like that we had a head problem um i hadn't really thought that the head would do that all the time um but it it, it ended up uh, being okay in the end okay <laughs> This wild driven uh, a simple choreography that people can play, but they want to uh, 
we don't want to be in okay with that. So, but we can still get a lot of different shapes. Yeah. And you can see, like, the, the bolts are sometimes hooking parts. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a surreal, it was almost like an out of body exper exper experience. Like I just, it was very, very strange. Um, then, okay, you can change here. Okay, so we strapped it up. Um, we didn't have the uh, chains and the hooks yet, so we just um, threw it on there to see if it was tall enough. Um, and I purchased these uh, limb restraints for the legs and arms that could be hold. And like, it's kind of scary that you can just buy that stuff on Amazon. Um, but I really, I fell in love with these really long ribbons, and it was perfect that um, that. Um, that's exactly what we needed to um, be able to pull uh, to pull the pieces up together. So it's a really nice one. Sometimes like some things happen by accident and end up working out. So here we're just we're just trying to figure out how the sling uh, works. And it was it was good because um, you know the figure is full size and this um, sling is is for a person. So it. Uh, it was encouraging that that you know it didn't look disproportionate. Okay, so now now Ken starts working on this this 3D model of what it's gonna what all the little wires are gonna are look like and where they're gonna go. And the top left image um, is kind of like a triangle, and you'll see in the on the bottom there there's like a row of spools. Um, those are the things that were that are going to be pulling up the the straps and then in the back are all the little the motors and then in and in the back again is where the arduino is and i don't some other things that can figure it out uh for me so he was um engineering stuff and this is what he built uh for the top of the um trapeze so that all the motors and everything could be anchored to it. Uh, this is uh, his um, his attempts to see how the ribbon uh, worked when it went up and down the spool. So I think Ken designed this spool and he printed it on a 3D printer, um, which is kind of amazing because you can make anything you want any size you want and I guess this is a shot of sort of the beginning of these kinds of casing casings uh, so there's a little motor that black square um, that turns the spool um, uh, made all made with a 3d printer and we had to make five of them one for each limb and then one for the middle and so he's assembling everything and all of his wires and uh, putting the the ribbon on and it fits perfectly. Then he um, installed them all on top. This is a, a shot of his uh, living room. I think at one point <laughs> he was uh, he was working hard trying to get these spools to do what they were supposed to. It's a little bit of a back view of. Those little computers, computer chippy things. <laughs> this is like, this is uh, the finished piece. So this is how it looks. And this is underneath. So I don't know if you can see that little metal. Uh, it looks like an L shape, that little thing in the middle, the middle strap there that has the big hook. Um, and on the when the strap goes up, it hits a little stopper, those little thin uh, metal lines, and that's how the mechanism knows to kick out. 
um, so that it doesn't go up even further. That's its stopping point. And so I thought that was kind of neat. But so many little, like, unbelievable, anything you want to have control uh, it can be done. So this middle one was where the the T-bar is hanging from. Um, and on the night of the opening, it held fine. Um, but the next day, um, uh, that spool had broken because of the weight of the the weight of the uh, figure was too heavy. So he went back to the drawing board and made a spool out of uh, metal. So that I don't even know how he did that, but um, so, so that uh, it would be stronger. Uh, so we don't have this problem. And then he had to invent a, a remote. So this is his uh, preliminary drawing. Um, he was always drawing things and sketching things to show me so I understand what, um, you know what he's doing so he's make he made this uh, this remote uh, for um, well I don't th yeah I don't know if that, that I would have to ask him but I'm not one two three four five six yeah I, I don't know if all of those parts are in the remote like the remote is pretty thick so maybe that's the underneath of it and then the buttons every every individual button doesn't in, uh, a thing and he had to you know acrylic uh, to um, and he 3d printed the case uh, so it was just a bunch of details and this is um someone he found to um, bring on to help uh, ray peterson he helped uh, program all of the buttons, the remote, to the piece. And so um, that was really helpful to have um, somebody with experience able to to do that for, for me. Little old me. Here I am sitting around doing nothing while everybody else works hard. <laughs> and this is Erica Lincoln, who helped me a lot just in the sense of uh, this was another mentor ken was a mentor uh, erica was a mentor in the program and she she was there to you know help me talk through some of my questions or or figuring out what i wanted to show and what i wanted it to mean and it was helpful to have her there for that in that sense and she um helped me she helped tailor uh the uh sling so that it would fit perfectly and so that it wouldn't um, sort of move around as the figure was going up and down so that it would stay put in there. So here she is the night of the opening. Um, before the opening, she's just uh, doing some final sewing um, in the back of the sling there. Look at me, aren't I ha don't I look happy? <laughs> this is me and Ken at the opening, super happy. My daughter, Lydia, my son was sick so he couldn't be there but um and you see that little toolbox on the bottom that's the power um i just loved how ken you know thinks he just he just you know well, well let's just put it in a toolbox and it's just so practical and and kind of cool you know like tools and technic technical support it's just it's perfect and here i am at the agsm um moving myself which is always fun i think i might put this up in my living room when it comes back home i don't know if my family will like that or not but uh whatever and here i am patting myself on the head <laughs> this is a photo that uh susan abbott took it just it just ended up looking like that funny <laughs> And this is what I thought I might do with the piece later on, but this failed. I was like, no, nope, we're not going to do yoga, chair yoga. Um, I thought, you know, maybe I can do a bunch of yoga poses, but it's the figure is just not, um, because it's all frontal, it's just not uh, flexible enough to, I would have to reshoot my whole body sideways. You know, I'd have to do a full 360. Maybe I could go into like a 3D printer machine or something might work better and so this is um the last thing i wanted to to share it's just um where i want what i might what i'd like to do with the piece 
um, later and I actually started this during the mentorship, but I wasn't able to finish it. It was just the learning curve was just too, too steep. So um, this is what I made. So it's very preliminary and there's all these weird things happening to body parts, but I imported all of my body parts into, um, uh, I don't know what it's called, an animation, the Adobe animation software. And um, I made this little video. I was try trying to um, make myself do a uh, here, I'll play it, and then you'll see what I was trying to trying to do. It's kind of slow at the first. So that's my cartwheel. <laughs> uh, and you won't believe how many hours that took. Oh, good Lord. Um, but I, that, that's sort of like what I think I'd like to, um, to, to, you know, go through, um, to try. And, um, other than that, I, I might, I might also try to do some, um, just some collage, like, you know, just regular old, um, regular collage with, uh, some of the leftover dolls that I have, um paper dolls so so yeah I um I babbled along for a long time and I didn't stop anybody <laughs> have any questions so I'll remind everybody that they can uh, ask questions through the comments wherever they're joining us from that was fascinating not babbling at all um, while we <laughs> wait for people um, I have a few questions that arose okay. for me um, so we spoke uh, at the at the luncheon look about the idea of asking for help being this um, extreme act of friendship, um, almost more than offering help, asking for help shows this thing. And um, I think that there's also an implicit um, complication of friendship in uh, photography, but photographing somebody else, but there's mm -hmm. this this trust relationship that has to has mm -hmm. to happen between the photographer and, and the model. And then specifically um, in this vulnerable position, specifically with your mentor being the one who's doing the photography. And this is the first time that you've worked with your own body in this right. in this way. Um, yeah. And the way that you just keep talking about how it was fun. Um, yeah. can, can you talk about, um, uh, I don't know, comfort, discomfort, and, and that friendship trust relationship? Well, I kind of like, that's the kind of thing that, that I had overcome a long time ago. Uh, I was 15 years old, super like, you know, I didn't expect that I would be put in a position where I would be naked in front of people all the time or needing personal care like that. It was a very rude awakening and um, I got used to it very quickly. And, and um, almost as soon as the act, well, as soon as the accident happened, I felt this real disconnect between my own self and um, the rest of my body because uh, it wasn't responding and it wasn't doing, it wasn't feeling what I, what it should feel. And, and so um, I, I don't have a huge issue with um, privacy and um, asking for help is just something that, or needing help and needing people to be in my personal private space is just a regular occurrence uh, in my in my day, and it's just no no longer, it's just no longer it doesn't matter to me anymore. And so, um, but I did like I wouldn't have done it without Diana. Um, I think if I hadn't. Um, had that already relationship with her, um, you know, I, I'd been through art school. She was my art teacher. She, she, she knows me personally. So it was just, uh, without, without Diana taking the photos, I wouldn't have been able to do the project. And I, she's the only one that I felt comfortable, um, enough with to, to do, to do those photos. And so. I mean, I knew, I mean, she's worked with the body. Um, she's totally into different 
diverse bodies and and um and she's such a kind and generous um generous artist who's given me a lot as well and so i i was just so happy that she agreed to to work with me and um you know it just it, it all works out in the end all the time i don't know how but it just does <laughs> Hey. Hi. Uh, so it seems Lucy is having a tiny bit of an issue with the connection, uh, but she will be right back. Okay. Oh, here she is. Are you having, are you having technical difficulties, Lucy? I need some technical support. You I got do. back in here. You do. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I am. Um, I missed the the last, but yeah, I got the I uh, I lost you when you were saying if it hadn't been for the the right. relationship you already had with Diana, um, these things wouldn't have been um, possible in in many ways. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <clears throat> there's a big part of the um, of the project that makes me feel like um, it, it feels like a social experiment that you're conducting on us. Yeah, I remember during the opening here at the AGSM, um, next to the remote, the way that we have it displayed, there's a big, um, you know, mounted image of a hand with little lines pointing right at the finger, um, right next to the, where we have the remote on a plinth. And I overheard a visitor saying, oh, I, I want to touch it so badly. And I think that if I hadn't been walking by and said, yeah, no, touch it, you know, yeah, <laughs> she, yeah. she wouldn't have. So there's something about yeah, like shirking the etiquette, something about misbehavior um, that's going on there with the gallery space and then how to interact with the person in general, which I think goes back to um, what you were saying about spectacle. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's what I really wanted is for uh, the viewer to like, I think it's kind of a double, it's double sided. The viewer sees what, um, sees my perspective. My my per perspective, um, because I'm not there for real, and um, they can sort of impose their, their themselves, put themselves into my shoes, and, and they are also controlling the remote. And so they, you know, they're thinking and like, it, I just wanted them to walk away from the piece thinking like, oh, if I leave, she's just going to stay there like that forever. She won't be able to like, is that an uncomfortable position? Should I maybe lower her arms before I leave? Or should I, you know, it was just, it was just sort of that conversation, uh, you know, that I wanted the individual to have with themselves. Yeah, the the default position when you turn it on is, uh, it's, it's like a full frog, like everything yeah. is up at its highest. Yeah. And I often go in when the gallery first opens and just lower. <laughs> I know, because it's like, and me too, I'd be like, oh, God, it's doing the frog thing again. But um, it's just that that's, you know, um, whatever, like. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, and I appreciate that you, you know, lowered my legs for me uh, on numerous occasions, because it, that's what it's all about, right? Like It just feels like, like the right thing to do. Right, right. And you just you just have that compassion and like, oh, I wouldn't want to be sprawled out like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to help that that poor figure, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a question from Susan Abbott. Um, she says, you have spoken of detachment before. Just wondering if this project in a way has made it feel more, has made it feel more or less united in terms of detachment. Yeah, I think more. Um, I think the, the more, the older I, the more time I spend in this situation and the more I work with, you know, my own body, the more detached I, I feel. Um, and um, it, it, it actually, I mean, it's, it's not a, it's not a, like a horrific, uh, oh, I'm so detached from my body feeling. It's more of a like, that's okay. This is a vessel. <laughs> And it's just allowing my brain to remain here and my soul to remain here for a little while longer. And, you know, eventually this, the rest of the part is going to break down just like everyone else's 
body mm -hmm. will break down. Um, and so it's okay that I'm not attached to, to my body. It feels weird. It's okay that I'm detached to my body because I, I don't, it's, it technically is not attached. Like the, the nerves are severed. There's no attachment there. So it's just, um, learning to deal with the limbs that are strangling, strangling along. I just, um, I just have to keep, keep care of them and, and, uh, keep, um, relationships healthy and friendly enough so that others will continue to want to help me. <laughs> so. That's a, that, that's a, a extra bit of labor that I hadn't considered mm -hmm. in this idea of, of, um, yeah. of help. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I've, I have healthcare aides that have been with me for many, many, like 13, 14 years. And, and that doesn't happen just from like somebody um, uh, that doesn't happen just because they like uh, they like the working the job like it's because we built a relationship and I you know it's, I have to be fully there for them and as they are for me yeah. um, and I can't be you know I can't be rude and I can't be um, unappreciative and I you know so so those are this just it's all about our relationships uh, all the time mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> i love you too. lots of love <laughs> um in your in your earlier work i was struck by the the connection that you made between spectacle and motherhood um mm -hmm. <clears throat> which does make me think about um uh the disconnect from your body because motherhood is you know, your body did that stuff, you yeah. know, and, and, and needing the help. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing that I, that I sometimes say is like, this body doesn't really owe me anything. Um, I was able to have two kids. Um, and I know that that's a feat for some and, um, it, it's, you know, it did what it was supposed to do in that sense. So I can't complain too much. Um, and, and and yeah just the whole every every sort of milestone comes with different challenges like i'm already thinking about aging with spinal cord injury and how is that going to work and you know at what age am i going to be bedridden and i'm just saving all my movies for for, uh, <laughs> for that time but um you know can't start sopranos just yet that's right that's right i haven't exactly i'll add that to my list um, <laughs> yeah it's just you know i'm not sure what's coming ahead and um but for now uh i'm still up and out and about and it's been 30 sort of 30 some years i met someone in a in a shared uh, bus ride yesterday who had been injured for 40 years and so we were just um talking about this exact same thing and it's nice uh you know, I'm not alone. So yeah, lots of us are doing it in different ways. You know, we, uh, other people have different struggles and um, mine are very visual, uh, very out there in the open and obvious. Um, but it's just human nature to want to keep, to keep, to keep going to, to survive, right? Just like that goat in the wheelchair. Yeah. Um, you know, the reason why the person decided to help them uh, by building them a wheelchair is because they saw that the goat, you know, still wanted to live. And when he, when he is put in the wheelchair, he's super happy and, and, and living his life. And yeah. so that's, it's just the will to, the will to survive is, is what keeps us going all the time. And it will keep us going in the zombie apocalypse as well. All the way through it or all the way up to the end. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just we're we're almost out of time, but um, <clears throat> we haven't talked about your um, your teaching practice, your um, your outreach, your community work. Um, uh, just to maybe awkwardly transition, but this idea that you have always been looking into how to make your collage work interactive. Um, if there's something about that engagement that links back to your education and and your and your outreach. Yeah, maybe. Um... Yeah, I just, uh, 
I find that art is such an important educational tool. Like I have a bachelor of education and, and um, I guess I'm just a really big visual learner, I suppose, but and I put a lot of weight on it. And I, but I just find that, you know, images give you such a, a quick way of getting information and understanding things like this piece um, explains my feelings and my sentiments, uh, you know, in, in one minute than what I was able to explain to you in the last whole hour, right? So, um, and I really enjoy mentoring not only other artists, but I also mentor, you know, individuals who are recently injured um, because I'm sort of the veteran now. Uh, I used to go to others uh, who were injured later on uh, earlier than, than me for um, help and assistance and guidance. Uh, why reinvent the wheel if someone else can can give you a trick or or help help you along the way and so i i do that um with other individuals who are um learning to live with this uh disability as well and and i just i think i think i'm just trying to give back i guess um as much as i have received from everyone all of you out there especially susan <laughs> 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 yeah yeah um that makes um yeah as, in the context of the the obligation to stay nice to everybody it's also the the privilege to to continue to to right. keep your attitude right yeah right, right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I think that that's a really good place to, to wrap up. We're at exactly two. So I would like to thank you so much for joining us and being so generous with your time. Um, again, anybody can come see the see the work in person at the AGSM until November 13th. I do encourage you to, you can also, if you're, if you're not able to come to Brandon, we have a, a virtual gallery that does um, spotlights on, on the work so you can see them in more detail and in motion. Um, so thank you so much, Yvette, and thanks everyone who joins us. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.